Hello everyone, this is the Global Business Podcast and I'm your host, Mark Philpott. Hello, it's great to be back with you all again and I'm looking forward to this episode of the Global Business Podcast. I have another great guest coming up today and he's going to tell us all about what's been going on in the hospitality industry during these changing times. So why don't we get on over now and meet my guest for today. His name is Dion Taylor. So it's a very warm welcome to the Global Business Podcast to Dion Taylor. Dion, how are you today? Well, Mark, really excited to be on the show. Thanks for joining me on the show today. Whereabouts in the world are you joining us from? I'm in sunny Bundaberg, roughly the middle of Queensland on the coast. Queensland in Australia. So all our international listeners today, Dion's coming from a beautiful part of the world where I don't think you even get to experience winter up there, Dion, do you? No, I think we had that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of days in a row we probably call winter and then it's um, back to a beautiful 20 degree days. Fantastic. Now, you're the founder of a business called HSG at the Gardens. Why did you decide to start that company? It's been a bit of a combination of wanting to get my trade skills of a qualified chef back in the game, but I also have a close connection and a reason for wanting people to enjoy food. To me, it's about reconnecting food to experiences and having people enjoy their food again. Rather than just eating to sustain, I want them to get involved and know where their food comes from. Mm, beautiful. What year did you start the company? We're actually only in our infancy. This particular company is about 18 months old, but we've right. been in the hospitality and catering sector for about 10 years now. Well, that uh, provides a great segue into my next series of questions because you've you've started a young company uh, at a time when there's a lot of change going on in the world, not only of your particular industry, but also in business in, in general. What changes have you had to make during for your business during these difficult times? Primarily, Mark, it's been focusing on online. We needed to find ways to continue to reach to our community. We needed to give them easy access to booking, to ordering, and just staying connected with us. We had a fear that we were going to lose connectivity with our family, and our family are our clients. So it was important for us to keep connected. I'm interested to know how that actually occurred, because I would imagine that overnight, literally, you had to close off your restaurant and you had to go into this new way of engaging with your customers from a, a point of view of them ordering and, and taking away. Did it take a while for your customers to adjust to that or did they pick up on that fairly quickly? You, you're right in the necessity. We closed, we had service on a Sunday, we were closed on a Monday, so we still had a fridge and a freezer full of food. So we had to act quickly. <laughs> For us, we already had the social media platforms, we had a website platform, but only probably about four or five weeks beforehand, we'd started using an online ordering app. So for us, we had to really get the message out and about in the marketplace that we were open in some capacity, but we'd very much had to diversify and quickly. What are a couple of really important things um, when you're working with your customers now versus when you had them walking into your restaurant every day? For us, we need to be able to, we had to work out ways that we could keep our menu changing. It's, it's a slightly different experience when you're ordering takeaway or a grab and go meal. You start getting bored very quickly because you're ordering online, you're either picking up or having food delivered, but then you're eating it at home. So they're missing a big part of the atmosphere and the ambiance of a restaurant. So we had to have an evolving menu. We had to make it easy for people to order online because not everyone is tech savvy. But we also had to be mindful that we still had people that wanted to pick up food. So they wanted to come to the restaurant. So we had to create platforms for, I guess, old school, new school and everyone in between. So we, things as basic as change signage on the, on the restaurant, on our roadsides. We had to update our website. We had to update all of our social. 
we further introduced the ordering app, but then it was about making sure that people knew how to use it. So online tutorials and constant reminders. Mm. How long did it take you and your, your um, staff to come up to speed with the new environment? Was it something that you were able to turn on pretty quickly or were those things that you just mentioned a staged in approach? It's hard enough. It was pretty much all turned on in about three days. Mm. Um, I think for us, the hardest thing was just the constant need of getting all this information out. So fortunately for us as a small business, so we've got less than 20 team members, we can turn our ship quite quickly. If you think of like a battleship, like a big corporate supermarket, they probably need to take a lot of time. Big restaurants and franchises, they've got to get approval. We were able to act and act now. We didn't have the capacity just to close and wait. I virtually stopped trading for about a day and a half and then we were back into business. Mm. Do you think being a young company helped you in that process versus being a company that had been established a long time? I don't know that the age of the company necessarily was a big concern for people, but for us, a big part of our culture in our business is innovation. We are often changing things. In that first 12 months of our restaurant being opened, we did seasonal menu changes and even though while we don't get winter and necessarily four seasons, we actually did five menu changes over 14 months mm. because weather was changing and then this all happened on top. So it was business as normal, but only because we had trained our clients already to expect new things and not be scared of them. How did it impact your staff in terms of morale? Because I guess in a restaurant business, you're used to having the clientele come in and sit down and be part of your business. How was it for your, your team members not having the, the customers on premise anymore? Well, sadly for Mark, we actually had to downscale a lot. So one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my business career was how do I tell my team that you're all on standby until we build the business back up again. So only now, what are we, two and a half months in, we're now starting to turn our team members back on. So the challenge has actually been keeping the morale in the team while not necessarily seeing them on a daily basis. How have you done that? Yeah, great. We've, um, we've always had a, um, a Facebook group for our business. We've also had a Facebook page for our team. So for us, it's about sharing all the things that we would normally take for granted. Like for us on site, it was daily to start with messages to the team. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. This is how we're going to do it. But this is how you can help. We wanted to make sure that the buy-in from our team didn't dissipate. And we wanted to make sure that they knew what was taking place, even though they weren't necessarily all here. Um, it's always been a challenge working with any team, but we've got a close team. Even though our business is open seven days a week, it doesn't mean we've got 40 team members. We have a small team, we're a very tight team, but the challenge was we're all very different personalities. Mm -hmm. So some weren't buying in to what we were doing, they wanted to see it. So we introduced videos, photos, and then the written updates as well. Yeah, great. So over that period of time that we're talking about, how's the fluctuation gone? Has there become a lot more confidence now in the team members that things are slowly getting back to normal? Yeah, they're sort of sitting on the fence. There's a few of them in the background waiting and watching because the hospitality sector has obviously been one of the major industries in Australia that have been affected with um, the whole COVID-19. So for us, there's a little bit of trial and error. We're putting things in the marketplace, we're testing, but the most important thing is whatever those results are, we're still sharing them with our team. Yeah, terrific. Now, the other part of the business is the supplier base. So how have you been able to manage and work with your suppliers through this difficult time? 
it's probably been the biggest challenge, Mark, to be fair. People that I would normally, over a full 12 month cycle, spend, we have three key suppliers for our non-perishable items. Between the three of them, we would normally spend between three and $400,000 a year. And we haven't heard from them. Mm. It's been an interesting challenge because I guess for me, the concept has been in my um, delivery to my clients, you've got to reach out. You've got to make sure people feel connected. Mm. And when you lose that connection, it's a little bit like, I guess, <laughs> a, a boat in the ocean with no captain. You're sort yeah. of at the mercy of the gods. And I wasn't feeling comfortable with that. So the supplies that I needed and genuinely need and the smaller businesses, we created a new connection, stronger bonds, almost to the point where we would probably have friendships without the whole social interaction and house visits and all that sort of stuff. It's just, they understand what my ethos are of my business. They understand what now, particularly, what my morals are and I need them, but I look forward to working with them. So as a business owner, has this taught you, I don't want to say a lesson necessarily, but it's, it's been a great experience for you to understand, I guess, the process of developing these relationships. Is, is that something you're going to take on board moving forward now with, um, you know, looking at other suppliers and the kinds of value systems they have for your business? Yes, very. Mm. To me, it's opened up the door for joint ventures. Mm -hmm. A lot of the smaller business particularly are doing buying groups together where they're buying commodities from either further afield and we're freighting them in. There's opportunities for people to work together with supply chains where classic example, for example, I'm working with a local producer of some pasta. I buy his pasta because I couldn't get the wholesale quality pasta. And now we're doing um, grab and go meals together his pasta, my sauce, out into the market, representing our region. Yeah, brilliant. Another thing that I'm interested to know is your previous marketing strategies around customer loyalty. Did you find that the things that you were doing previously with your customers has kept them loyal to your business during these um, COVID-19 times? It's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. I've been genuinely surprised. Some customers that would be out every single week in the restaurant pre-COVID, haven't seen them. So it's fascinating. And yet with the grab and go meals or the online ordering, we introduce things like loyalty programs, buy 10, get one free. No one's really taken it up. So what people are actually being loyal to is my loyalty to them. Mm. Being open, being available, maintaining the quality and just making sure that when restrictions start to open up, that we're ready, but we want them back. They want to feel important when it's safe for them to do so. Yeah. Now, where you, you've told us that you're in the Bundaberg area of Queensland in Australia, but where do your customers typically come from? Are they all from that area around you? The bulk of our customers, Mark, would be within about a 50 kilometer radius hmm. um, from our coastal areas, Bagara, Coral Cove, Innes Park, about a 25 kilometer to the coast. And then as far south as probably Childers, which is about 50 kilometers. However, we do get a number of inquiries from folks that are actually coming from further afield, but only for um, commercial ventures when we're doing um, functions in our corporate area. Mm, okay. What are a couple of pieces of advice that you can give other hospitality based companies who are faced with the similar challenges that you've been sharing with us today? Two probably key learnings for me is diversify your business. Make sure that you have at least four different income streams that are in line with your core business. So for us, we're a restaurant, we're a function center, we do our grab and go meals, and we do our catering. So we've got four very similar income streams, but they're different markets. Mm. We also learned 
when we're looking at diversification, make sure you do two things. Ask your customers, even if it's not what you want to do, sometimes they've got great ideas. And the second, include your team. If you've employed right and you've employed up as far as you've got people with skills maybe better than yours or different than yours, they've also got great ideas that they want to share. Mm. Yeah, terrific advice. What's your business look like going forward as we come out of this uh, lockdown more and, and the new landscape evolves? I don't want to talk about going back to what it was because we all know that's not going to be the case. So how has your business going to be evolving continually as you move forward? Oh, I love it. This is my favorite part. For us, our, a big part of our business is our weddings. So even though we've had to move a lot, we've also got what were bookings six months, nine months in advance. We now have bookings two years in advance. So people are being a lot more strategic with their bookings for weddings, engagements, anniversaries. But my absolute favorite, and I, I hope there's some business people that adopt the same, is look at what you actually want your business to achieve. I've now set target goals. I'm not going to be open seven days anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm personally not going to be working typically 12 or 14 hours a day. I want balance of life, quality of life, time with my family, my friends, and I want my customers to still feel inspired that we're here for them, but not seven days a week. Yeah, fantastic. What's the biggest lesson you've learned through this COVID-19 period for your business? Wow. Probably being true to me. I spent probably a little bit too much time wondering what everyone else wanted but I had all the answers already. So I spent more time going in, searching, soul searching, probably to almost, going, why did I start this business? Let's go back to basics, look at the roots, the foundation of the business, and further develop them. It's a bit like a big old tree. When the roots become unstable, the tree will fall over. Mm. I think a, a business, particularly a young business, is the same. We plant the seed, we water it, it comes up, and then we forget about it. We don't give it time to develop the roots, entrench our ethos, our morals, our everything into the foundation of our business. So we're spending a lot more time on why we opened up, what we want to achieve, and how we're going to do it. Would you say that this COVID-19 period has been somewhat of a blessing in disguise for you to be able to have a good look at your business? Definitely. I wouldn't have put my hand up and asked for it, but I'm certainly glad that I have had the time to go through it. And I've also had the time to really think, to reflect, and I can see a strong future, not just for my business, but for all the business leaders that are innovative, and looking to the future. Don't worry about what's happened. Look ahead and don't look in the rear view mirror. That's a great piece of advice. Now, all my listeners are sitting out there licking their chops and wondering what is the specials on the menu at the moment in your restaurant? What can you tell us about those? Ooh, we have, next week is actually what I'm really excited about. I love a gourmet pie. I'm gonna be making some beef stroganoff pies, some Hungarian goulash pies, chicken and mushroom pies, and butter chicken pies. Now, if that doesn't get your mouth watering on a cold winter's day, I don't know what else I can do. Dion Taylor, thank you very much for making us all very hungry. And thank you for joining me on the business podcast show today, Dion. It's been wonderful listening to your tips and advice for running a business in these difficult times. I'm going to be putting all the details of your business in the show notes so people can check that out. And we will catch up with you again shortly. Thank you, Dion. Love it, Mark. Appreciate your help and able to, able to help everyone. 
That was Dion Taylor, the owner of HSG Gardens, a hospitality business in Bundaberg on the east coast of Australia. And he was sharing with us today many tips about how he's dealt with COVID-19 in his business, how he's been innovative, how he's diversified, and how he's kept his employees up to date with what's been going on and trying to keep them motivated. I hope you found something useful in this episode from the Global Business Podcast. If you'd like to be on the show and talk about your business in these difficult times, get in touch with us via our Facebook page, and I will have a chat to you then. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening today. My name's Mark Philpott. Until we meet again next time, stay safe and stay well.